Good afternoon, Bermuda. Shortly after midnight on Saturday, the 24th of August, 2024, police officers were responding to an incident near Khyber Pass in Warwick. As they approached the junction with Quarry Lane, they observed two males riding a motorcycle heading south along Khyber Pass. The passenger discharged a firearm at our officers. In response, the officers pursued the suspects in an attempt to stop them. The rider lost control of their motorcycle and whilst being chased on foot, pointed the firearm towards the officers. In the course of this encounter, our officers discharged their weapons. The suspects managed to escape on foot. This is not the first time that officers have been shot at, but this is the first time that in the performance of their duty, BPS officers have discharged a lethal weapon at another person. I want to stress that, thankfully, there were no reports of injury resulting from this incident. I met with the officers involved on the evening in question and I'm grateful to say that they're doing well considering the circumstances. An investigation is now underway led by our serious crime unit. Additionally, we have in, in, initiated our post-incident procedures, which is a standard protocol whenever firearms are discharged, excluding training scenarios. This process is designed to thoroughly examine our police response and the use of firearms. We've also notified the Police Complaints Authority, which provides independent oversight of our actions. Further information on the investigation will be shared with Chief Inspector Burns. I must emphasize that it is absolutely reckless to shoot at the police. The offender puts his life at the ultimate risk. Such actions not only place the officers in extreme danger, but also endanger bystanders and, the bystanders and the community at large. The Bermuda Police Service is equipped and trained to effectively respond to these threatening situations. For over 25 years, we have been professionalizing our firearms training and capability. I am committed to maintaining our ability to respond to emergencies and have ensured that the number of firearms officers on patrol remains consistent even as resources have declined. Rest assured, there are dedicated teams of officers working tirelessly to deter and disrupt and apprehend those gang members who show a wanton disregard for our community's safety. This includes making arrests, executing warrants, and ensuring that those gang members face justice in our courts for their criminal acts. ACP Daniels will provide some additional information. I ask for the continued support of our community. Working together, we can make a difference. If you know something, please say something. Your information is vital to helping us keep Bermuda safe. Now I'd invite Chief Inspector Burns to uh, share a few comments. Good afternoon, everyone. I will now provide an investigative update from the Serious Crime Unit. I can confirm that the officers from the Serious Crime Department have commenced an investigation into this firearms incident. A crime scene investigator from our forensic support team has examined the scene the motorcycle ridden by the suspects has been recovered, as well as other items that will be forensically processed. We have recovered multiple shell casings from the scene that confirm that different weapons were fired. Investigators have spent the weekend making inquiries in the area, talking to area residents, and searching for any CCTV that may have captured uh, the incident. I would like to thank all residents who have come forward and assisted us thus far. As we actively continue the investigation, I want to remind everyone 
that the inv individuals who fired at police are currently at large. This was a dangerous and reckless act, as pointed out by the commissioner, that placed the lives of our officers and nearby residents at significant risk. I encourage anyone with information to contact the senior investigating officer heading the investigation, which is Superintendent Sharon Joseph at 717-2158, or you can email them at jsharon at bps.bm. Alternatively, you can call the Crime Stoppers on 800-8477, or you can speak to an officer who you know and trust. This incident is a stark reminder of the dangers of our officers face every day and the importance of com community partnerships in maintaining public safety. We urge the community to remain vigilant and report any suspicious uh, behavior or activity to the police. Thank you. Good afternoon, members of the media. As noted from the Commissioner of Police, Mr. Simons, Bermuda continues to navigate through a difficult period of firearms use and senseless violence. As I've already said during previous press releases, today we have experienced seven murders since Bermuda Day 2024, three of those with the use of a firearm. An example of the community experiencing overall trauma just past weekend, we've had number one, an officer-involved shooting incident. Thankfully, no one has uh, been reported injured. This was our 14th confirmed firearms incident of 2024. In 2023, we had eight. This is a real concern uh, for the island. Sadly, Saturday night, we also experienced our fifth traffic fatality when a 50-year-old male lost his life under tra tragic circumstances on our roads. And in addition to that, there were reported 20 motorcycles stolen from various locations around the island. So just as a snapshot of uh, this past weekend. Tackling criminal gangs is the number one priority for the Bermuda Police Service. We continue to evolve our operational response plans to two key themes. One, targeting those most likely to cause and commit violent acts, as well as providing community reassurance. I recognize that some within our community will say that the police response often appears reactionary as opposed to being more proactive. Notwithstanding officers cannot be everywhere all the time, the PPS has placed a heavy emphasis on deploying officers in areas where the highest threat is likely. We've conducted a number of successful pre-planned and proactive operations with huge success in recent months. This includes the seizure of millions of dollars, what is believed to be earned via unlawful means, multiple large drug seizures, the arrests and charging before the courts of drug and firearm suspects, together with the recovery of eight operational firearms since last December, one of which is linked to multiple confirmed shootings since 2009. As we continue to execute these operations, particularly those involving traffic checkpoints, I am seeking residents' cooperation in exercising the necessary patience and restraint as some of the more highly visible tactics may impact you, as some of you may have seen recently. There will continue to be increased patrols in infected, affected areas, particularly those deemed hotspots and where various communities have been impacted by recent incidents of violence or other trauma. There continue to be teams dedicated to targeting those suspected of committing violence. These teams have been in place for the majority of the summer with great success, as I've highlighted above. In closing, I take this opportunity to thank those persons who have provided assistance to the police so far, as well as those police officers who continue to show up and show out every day. It is incumbent upon the community to stand together 
and support each other when faced with those bent on destabilizing our society. The Bermuda Police Service continues to be encouraged by those willing to do that. Without information from our communities, we have only part of the picture. The more complete our site picture, the better we are able to direct our own activity to those areas with the greatest need continuing to arrest and convict those who cause the greatest harm. Thank you. Any, any questions? Yep. Uh, I've actually already said to the media that I think there's been a step change in terms of, uh, you know, what people are willing to do or the level of violence th um, that we're seeing. Um, and perhaps this is sort of indicative um, of, of that trend. So it, it is concerning. Uh, the Bermuda Police is doing its part to uh, identify and arrest individuals that are involved in that criminality and, be and, and to detect and deter, sorry, to de deter and disrupt activity before it happens. With the activity you saw Saturday night, the police are prepared to fight back. Do you see or see someone getting hit or even killed by a returning car from coming from police? Right, so I think every, uh, that, that is an eventuality that we <coughs> need to prepare for. The, the reality is in 2024, um, as a policing organization for a fairly large, for a fairly large uh, population that has the full range of, of policing issues, um, I think it is a testament to us as a people and to us as a, as a group of police officers um, that, that that has not occurred, particularly in light of the number of confirmed firearms uh, incidents that have occurred over the past, you know, 15 years. What did you say to the public? You see on social media where they were calling the police uh, saw in their reaction. Uh, I know you have, because of the law, can the police change the tactics? So I, I, I appreciate that perspective. I think, um, you know, when you look at other jurisdictions and, and the style and nature of their um, policing, uh, it can be a little bit different. One of the things that I'm particularly um, pleased about is that our relationship with the, the, the community and the public is a positive one. Um, the, uh, the public are continuing to ask to see our presence, and I think that is... Um, a reflection of the balanced approach that we take towards law enforcement. Mr. Daniels pointed out that in this year, uh, or since December of this year, we've recovered eight firearms. I don't have the total amount of arrests that have been made, but there's going to be a number of court cases that are backed up. So the, our response is proportionate to the um, events that, and incidents that occur. What do you say to I, again, when you look at you know trends that are happening uh, sort of just globally, particularly in the uh, OTs, you know where um, there are you know significant amount of criminal uh, firearms types of incidents, we're we're doing quite well as a community, right? Those are down to individual choices, and we've seen evolution in behavior of the uh, you know of the community, which is quite frankly disturbing. Thank you. Oh, thank you, um, going back to the the, the incident on Saturday morning. Could you tell me what the um, what the initial incident was that, that caused the police to, to go to Cairo? You said there was an, one incident. Um, and is it related to the shooting? Do you think that... Uh, so it was a call, it was a call for service. Um, uh, maybe like a, a prowling or a burglary uh, in progress. Um, I don't want to make the link between those two at this point. It's way too early to establish that, but without a doubt, that's a line of inquiry that we're examining. And, and why was the police armed? Because we thought that it's only um, you know, an armed response unit, members of an armed response unit will be armed, but generally officers on patrol don't normally carry firearms. Do they? So, um, there are a group of officers that, you know, 24 hours a day are, are armed, right? So we have an armed response capability that is 24 hours a day, and, you know, they're out on patrol. So there is a likelihood that um, people up to bad things are going to encounter a firearms officer. And um, do you know exactly how many shots were fired? At this moment in time, that's you know just not information that we're going to release. We have the uh, 
um, post-incident investigation, the post-incident uh, procedure, which really is about examining, well, there's two things. There's the actual investigation, so general police investigation, but there's another um, inquiry that really looks at the entire process, and it's just far too early in that inquiry to say that. But, but you are confident in saying that it was the, the suspects who fired first, um, and then... There was a police, response, yeah. yes. Um, and so there was, would, it, would it be fair to say that it was a firefight, or was it just you know, one or two shots? Or? <laughs> I, I, I'm confident in saying that there were there was a, a number of um, shots that were fired um, on on both sides of this equation, if you'd like. Now, you, you mentioned in your in your initial statement that thankfully there were there were the, the, the offenders managed to escape, and then there, there were no reports of any injuries, nobody going to hospital, hospital. For gunshot wounds. Or, yep. and, and you you seemed um, quite pleased about that, but it it does rather beg the question: What's the point of police officers? firing at suspects if they're not going to hit the target. Uh, I appreciate that, but when you're dealing with people that are on foot, running, moving, etc., that is an incredibly um, difficult kind of circumstance, which you would see, you know, the world over. And whilst we're on that point, I just have absolute confidence in the firearms teams in terms of their training and their capability. That was an extremely difficult situation that we were confronted with, and when I step away from that, I'm grateful that no one was in fact injured. And how many officers were involved, and actually, sorry, if you could count on that. Two. Two. And, and you said that they're, they're doing well, but what's the, what, what's the mood generally amongst, uh, amongst uh, your teams, and, and how are police officers doing generally? But I, 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 I mean, yeah, I'm sure that there's, uh, you know, some, some reflection that's going on, without a doubt, you know, some concern, you know, that uh, officers would be uh, ex experiencing. Um, you know, what, we're, we're, we're fortunate that all our officers have safety equipment that uh, they would routinely use when they're uh, on patrol. That includes um, ballistic protection, um, that they're encouraged to also be uh, continuously to be, to be vigilant when they're making traffic stops and attending scenes where there's any type of indication that there's a threat of violence, that they um, would take the appropriate steps and respond safely to that. Um, what are the rules of engagement for officers um, when discharging a firearm? Is it a uh, no, you can't fire until you've been fired upon? Um, is there a particular uh, no. circumstance? No, so basically um, a threat is presented. They're skilled in the assessment of that threat and when it is appropriate to discharge a, a, um, a firearm. The discharge of a firearm is at the absolute last end um, of, a, of a continuum of use of force. Um, so yeah, there's no there's no right or wrong you know sort of sort of rules um, per se, but there are guidelines. So this is the first time that's ever happened where a police officer has ever feared so significantly for their life that they've both been fired. It's a pretty significant rubicon that we've passed. Policing by consent is a two way street with the people and, and the police. When it comes to cracking down on crimes like this, uh, it seems like that might have to come into question whether policing by consent is the way forward to solve something like this when it's escalating so rapidly. No, 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 I absolutely, I categorically disagree. We're never ever going to question policing by consent. It's at the bedrock of what we do. So earning and maintaining the community's confidence and trust that when we exercise um, authority, uh, the full range of our authorities, um, it's got to be in, in uh, it's got to be lawful, it's got to be proportionate, it's got to be necessary. There's been a lot of speculation about the um, traffic incidents, about the violence, and it comes at a time when the Vermeer Police Service is at an all-time low in its manpower. There's speculation that this could be what happens when the thin blue line gets too thin. Is it more important now than ever that you bolster your numbers, you try to find new ways to get people into the police force? So I think um, resourcing is definitely an important issue. It, it particularly affects our ability to surge in our response. Day-to-day -day response to policing is, you know, we, we've got that covered. Um, but it is that surge capability that is um, not where we would like to, it to be, where our numbers are. The issue is less about just sheer, well, it's not just, uh, we, we get uh, a number of applications, like you know, we might get, call it 100 applications for 15 posts, right? But it is getting 100 people through to those 15 that we just lose a lot. So there is still interest. Um, we have gone overseas. We've got a training course coming up in uh, December, 
Uh, and once we know the amount of uh, locals uh, that will fill that course, we may also have to uh, augment that by overseas um, recruits. Uh, last question, you guys have been putting on a pretty significant show um, for a while now. It's been several months where you guys have been making yourselves visible on the roads, um, out and about in the communities. I've seen cars passing by my house you know, late at night. Um, how much overtime is being put in here? Um, you guys must be um, exhausting yourselves to the point of you want to, you want to break. Uh, well, I, I don't think that's the case, but um, there is. It does come at a financial cost, so that you know that is a that is a real issue for us. So whenever we want to surge, that capability has to generally come from officers that are off duty. That means overtime. So um, I don't have the figures um, right now, but you know I, I could expect that um, our overtime expense is going to be significant. Thank you very much. Commissioner, will the officers that you increase your, your firearm uh, officers that carry both firearms? Will it be an increase in both the kind of firearms? So the increase of this type of behavior. Right. So, so generally speaking, um, we, we have a, a set amount of officers um, for sort of business as usual. Um, when tensions run high, we do put on additional resources. And then when tensions um, go back, some, we'll, we will consider scaling um, that back. Firearms resourcing is, is um, in terms of the sheer num amount of officers that can carry our, uh, firearms, we are looking to raise that number. We have a um, authorized firearms officer course um, projected for later this year, and we have uh, recently brought in a couple of officers, and we will almost likely be um, re recruiting other officers from overseas to swell the numbers. But the point I'm kind of making is that the, the, the amount of officers that are out on patrol hasn't changed. 14, 15 years ago, there were, as the commissioner back then said, very few firearms on island, and they've been shared. Do you have a number of how many firearms are on island today? So we've been asked that question for years and years and years, and uh, what, what I can say is that there still seems to be evidence that there's a small amount of firearms that are being used criminally. So if somebody has a firearm that they're just not using, it's difficult to say that that firearm exists or doesn't exist, but there still is evidence of a relatively few number of firearms that are being criminally used. My last question, Commissioner, to you, what are not seeing officers making life more difficult for those small numbers, as you say, yep. of individuals that are making it extremely difficult for Bermuda. Yep. So there are a number of um, arrests, warrants that are taking place where we have the evidence um, for that. Mr. Daniels spoke about some of our efforts around that. I think you know the recovery of eight firearms in particular since December speaks volumes um, to our efforts around targeting those individuals that are the highest harm causers. Over 25 sterling on the weekend. What do you advise of these sterling individuals not working? Quick cash. So I think 20, 20 um, cycles that were stolen over this weekend is just a, a, an awful lot. So just when we look at you know regular patterns of stuff, it's an awful lot. Our concern is that stolen cycles uh, often are subsequently used in firearms. So those bikes are laid down for a while and then taken out um, you know when when they're needed uh, when they're needed or when they're used um, criminally. I don't I I'm not so sure that I would agree with the narrative that funding um, or lack of funding is contributing to the um, cycle theft. Thank you, Raj. All right, I just got one last question. You mentioned a while back that um, two men on a motorcycle is a significant, is a good indicator for you um, that somebody might be up to no good, and that has happened again here. Is that, would you tell the public that's um, the sort of thing to be looking out for when uh, looking out for dangerous situations? Um, so I think particularly time of day and two up on a motorcycle would be an indicator for us. Um, you know, very often when we see people come to and from firearms incidents, they are two up on a bike, um, masked up, uh, that kind of thing. Yeah. All right. Thank you very much. Appreciate